Ahoy, this is Eddie from the DigitalOcean Developer Relations team. Uh, and earlier last week, GitHub announced the uh, beta for their self-hosted runners for GitHub Actions. Now, if you haven't used GitHub Actions before, I suggest you check it out. It's a full CI CD solution inside your GitHub repos, so you can have your projects build, test, deploy, all sorts of things. Uh, it's a real simple configuration. We'll take a look at it in a second. Uh, but currently how that works is your jobs would run on shared infrastructure. So you'd have to sit in line, sit in a queue, wait until your turn came up for your job. Uh, GitHub recently announced the self-hosted runners beta, which allows you to use your own hardware and enroll it as a dedicated runner for your own projects. Uh, they outline you know, reasons why you'd want to do this and the advantages of doing this in the blog post here, so I won't read through them. Uh, but the, I think the most important one is you get to skip that line and actually run on your own infrastructure. So I'm going to show you how to set that up today. It's actually really straightforward. Uh, and we're going to deploy a droplet on DigitalOcean. And so I'm just going to pick Ubuntu 18.04. Good. Size is good. Pick a data center. Select my SSH keys. I'm going to name the server GitHub Runner. And we'll create it. So this will take probably 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to show you what our project looks like. So I have a project that I've created in GitHub right here. It's a very straightforward Go app. It's just really got one function in here that adds two numbers. And then I have a test that I wrote that kind of just tests that function. So right now there's no uh, project uh, actions built in here. So we can actually deploy the first one by clicking just this actions button up here. And it's going to detect that we have a Go project, so we can just opt into the default here. It'll create me my uh, template YAML file right in the, the folder path here. And so you can go through and read this and uh, you know learn more about how to do actions. But it pretty much just runs through these different build steps, uses a, a base image here, and a couple other options. I'm going to delete a couple of these that we won't need. And I'm just going to add one that says test. And this is going to uh, run, just go test, and then our directory here. Uh, and that's it. So I can actually just commit this. And it will kick it off in a, a little bit. Should take a few seconds or so. Let's give it a refresh. Refresh a few times. How's our server looking? Cool, our server spun up. I'm going to copy that IP address. And so the first job was kicked off on the shared infrastructure. So we can take a look at that. And you'll see it's going to run through those steps I had outlined. So it's going to set up the job, pull down the repo. And then the test one is actually the one that we added. So that's going to actually run go test on our code. So it shouldn't take too long to complete. And should be done in just a second. So there's the test. It's going to be successful. It will pass. Should turn green. Cool. We are golden. So there's our first job that finished. Um, but now let's actually bootstrap our own infrastructure to run as the runner here. So I'm going to go to my terminal and we'll SSH into that server. And so I'm logged in as root here. Uh, first thing we need to do is create a user that's going to run. Uh, the GitHub runners will not let you run as root for good reasons, obviously. And so I'm just going to add a user. And we'll add Eddie Zane as a user. Put in a password. Take the defaults here. All right. And then I'm just going to add that user to the pseudo group. Cool. And so now let's log in as that user. And obviously you'd want to set up uh, better security and better permissions. But in the sake of getting this done, uh, we can come back to our settings here under the project. And I'm going to come down to Actions. And I'm going to add a runner. And then it's just going to walk me through some copy and paste steps here. First one <clears throat> is going to create a folder. And then we're going to download the runner's uh, project here. So that's just going to grab a tarball. And then we can extract that. 
And you can take a look at all the files that came with it, a uh, couple different scripts to get things set up, actually execute the runner. Uh, and so we'll just run through the very first step, which is to uh, run the config command. So it's gonna generate you a token for your project here to identify it. So I'll paste that in. It's gonna take us through a setup wizard. First thing it's gonna do is authenticate with that token. Uh, I'm gonna take the default name of the runner here, which is just the droplets name. And then we can pick a work directory. I'll just take the default, which is underscore work, uh, and that's it. So now our runner should be registered and show up here. Uh, and then we also need to change the YAML file uh, for our, our job there for, to say self-hosted. And so I will go ahead and do that. So let's start this guy up with uh, run sh. And if we refresh here, it should say it's online in a second. There we go, so it's idle. So popping back to our workflow, I'm gonna edit this file. And all we have to do is swap out that runs on Ubuntu latest for self-hosted, commit that change. And that job should actually start running on our, our runner. So let's give it a second. There it is kicking off. And just like before, we can check the progress of that on the actions tab. And so it's actually checking out the project locally. It will run, do all the steps here. Uh, it actually works really well. It's pretty seamless to set up. Uh, and our job succeeded. Well, that's cool. Uh, there's also a pretty cool script in here that lets you uh, set this up as a service. So this gets created after you set it up. So if we check that out, we gotta run that as sudo. And we can see we can install this as a service. This is why you need to be root for, for to, to run this. So you can run this from your root user and leave your, uh, your runner user not in the sudo group. And so let's do sudo service and we'll say install. And this is gonna install a systemd job that will restart our runner when the system restarts. And so let's take a look at the status there. I don't think it starts it. Yeah, so we can uh, start it up. And it's active and running. So now it's actually not attached to our terminal and we can come back and uh, we can trigger another build. So let's just say, pull down the change. Let's make a change in the, the code file here. Let's just add a comment. And we'll commit that. And push that up. And if we flip back to our runner, we can actually check the logs of that. So we can check, let's see, status might give it to us. Yep, so it's listening for jobs. Uh, we can also use journal CTL. And so we can say we want the unit file of, I think it's called action runner. There you go. Uh, it generates a default name here that you can autocomplete. And I'm gonna add the dash, uh, dash follow tag on here. So this will uh, kind of tail the job. So it's already finished. Um, so it pulled that job down, ran it. Very cool. Uh, a couple other notes is you can take a look at that work folder. You see it pulls down our projects individually here. So it's really nice to be able to like come on here and do some debugging. You can actually check out the project, uh, look at the logs and see what's been run. Uh, but that's really the root of it. So real simple to spin up. Uh, all you have to do is make that one change in your YAML file after you register your runner. Uh, and you can create a, a droplet to start running your GitHub Actions. So uh, hopefully this is helpful and uh, I hope you have a great time.